Dr. Marty Becker, America's vet, proud to call him a friend, honored that he is a frequent guest on this show, and we have him back, and it's been a while. His uh, brand new book, Your Cat, The Owner's Manual, Hundreds of Secrets, Surprises, and Solutions for Raising a Happy, Healthy Cat. It's a great book. Congratulations, Dr. Becker. Oh, thank you, my friend. You know, that's my, my 20th book that I've authored or co-authored. Uh, it seems like a an awful long time ago that uh, <laughs> I started out writing books, but it's uh, it's been a great journey. I, I love collaboration. You know, I wrote this with Gina Spadafori, my writing partner, and it, it's so fun. With I love collaborations because there's so many good girls and atta boys, and these moments of discovery where you get to share it with somebody, and and there's times when things don't go right, and you dig in as a team and you get things to work. And there was actually four of us worked on this book. It took two years. We interviewed 20 of the world's top experts in, in feline medicine and behavior. And one of the things I think is really gratifying is people that are experts, that are recognized, uh, you know, they're the textbook writing, lecture hall packing, uh, you know, the superstars of feline medicine around the world that they, they said, you know what, I didn't know that. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. they found something out that worked. And one example is that there's a, a toy called the bird. And I asked all these people, listen, you got one toy you can recommend every cat owner. What would you recommend? And probably 12 out of the 20 said the bird. And frankly, I'd never, never had one, never seen it. And I went into to Petco, and it's in kind of a, you know, I'd call it a low-end packaging. I didn't never bought the thing. I'd have bought something else. You know, I bought mm. something else that was a little more sizzle to it, you know, a little fancier wrapping or something. Yeah. But the the key to this thing is the way the feathers are wrapped on it, and with this, you know, it's got a swivel on it like a fishing uh, fishing setup would have a fishing pole. That it has this wounded bird action, and my gosh, it has a harmonic something that I can't hear, but the cats hear, and some kind of weird movement. And my gosh, I hooked that thing together the first time, and and pulled it along the ground up in the air, and the cats were flying out everywhere after this thing. So. The, some of it's kind of stuff like that. Other things are are more medically related. But if you have a cat, it's going to live a happier, healthier, fuller life. Or if you've never had a cat and you're looking for the you know the right make and model, and you want to optimize its health and minimize your veterinary expenditures, and this is the book for you. Yeah, it is. It is really an owner's manual. And of course, his other book, the last book, uh, your dog, the owner's manual. I love that book, and I, I usually quote things from the book and give suggestions from the book. It's a great one. That just came out in uh, paperback. You know, in your first chapter, you talk about, in fact, you have there's a caption. I have it here. It's really cool. It's where you're holding up your, I guess, your cat, and you say, let me see how you put it. Uh, yeah, they deserve to be treated like cats, both behaviorally and medically. And talk about that, because I think we tend to think of them as dogs or similar to dogs. Talk about that, Chad. Very is, interesting. Is this that crazy picture where I'm holding that cat up and it's hanging down? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I love that picture. That was actually taken at uh, Lakewood Animal Hospital where I work. I, I want people to know, too, you know, they might have seen me on Good Morning America for 16 years. Uh, they might have seen me on Dr. Oz the last three years, but I... I I'm a practicing veterinarian, so I just don't play a veterinarian on TV. I still practice. And, and I practice in two resort towns in northern Idaho. One's uh, Sandpoint, Idaho, and the other's Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And, and I fly in and out of Spokane, Washington, by the way. You know, I travel all over the world. It's uh, two and a half hours from my ranch down to that airport. But, you know, you've got cell phone coverage for most of it if you want it, or if you want to just relax and recharge, you can. But that old cat, he's so relaxed. I've got a collar in my in my teeth, and he's hanging down like a, like I'd call a sack of potatoes. You can only say that if you're from Idaho like I am, but he's hanging down there, and that cat is so relaxed. He's just like a, we call them taffy cats. And part of the reason he's relaxed is pheromones, which we'll talk about a little later. But I, I think you hit the nail right on the head. There's two main things I would want cat owners out there to know. One, cats are not small dogs, and two, cats need veterinary care too. They're they're not a small dog, and that you know dogs are like the perpetual toddler. They they look at you, they follow you around. You know, it's like mama, mom, I love you, mom, I love you, mama. Well, you know what? Some cats are like that, and a lot aren't. A lot of cats are like teenagers. They hang out in their room, and they come down when it's time for supper. <laughs> and they're not. You know, I, I looked at a 
a picture in Park City. We were up there on this tour, and there was this beautiful picture that Tom, Thomas Mangelson, this famous photographer, had taken of this wolf. And I looked at this close-up of this wolf, and I thought, my gosh, if, if aliens came down in a spaceship and they saw these little teacup poodles and they saw these wiener dogs and they saw these uh, these malmutes and they saw these Great Danes, they saw these Irish wolfhounds, they saw these masses, everything I saw, these pugs, everything I saw in the street of Park City, they'd think, what are those? My yeah. gosh, there's a kid, there's a, look at all these different animals. Those all come from a wolf. It's been called the most plastic of species. Now, cats, they pretty much all look like cats. You know, they don't see, there's some strange kind of ones, but for the most part, they share, you know, the same kind of body size, uh, the same, you know, the, the same conformation. And they all come from a desert cat. And because they come from a desert cat from Africa, there's certain things that, that are a lot different from dogs. One is inside every cat, no matter how fat that cat is, it thinks it's a lethal killing machine. And so we need to we need to feather that out of them and let them express themselves with with non lethal hunts in the home and games of play where they're attacking and killing things. Mm-hmm. They're when they went to the bathroom they went in sand and so the the litter choices you know we go to the litter and uh, I, I love it one's called world's best cat litter then talk about uh, you know that's like one eight hundred flowers you think well that's got to be it or this one's Crystal blend cat litter. This one's feline pine. This clever name. This is walnut shells. This is recycled newspapers. I'll do something eco friendly. Well, guess what? When cats got to pick the litter they like, they go back to the African desert. They like clumping clay litter, which has that kind of sand like consistency without a scent. They don't want scent in it. Uh, the, the number one brand they like, by the way, is Fresh Step with carbon. Um, no scent, uh, you know, no litter box liners, no cover hoods, you know, out there, there was, you know, they go in a place that didn't have any smell. And also dogs have a tremendous thirst drive. You know, this, when your dog's thirsty, it heads off and gets a drink. Uh, and the same thing with me. When I get thirsty as a human, I get a drink, but cats have a very low thirst drive. Hmm. And so you've got to, you've got to jack that up by using a drinking fountain. Uh, you can get, you know, go to Petco or the local pet store and get one. Uh, the best drinking fountains, now they're not all created equal either. The best drinking fountains that I find are the ones that have a stream, a ramp, and a pool. Because some cats like to drink out of the stream, just like a dripping faucet or a shower. Mm-hmm. Others like to lick it as it comes down the ramp, and others will drink it out of the pool. And here's one last thing. Uh, this is another thing how dogs and cats are different. A dog, when it drinks, it curls its tongue under, like you just curl your fingers back towards the palm of your hand. And, right. and it just ladles this water rather sloppily into the floor of its mouth, and it swallows every time. So every time a, 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 it slops them in there, it swallows. Well, guess what a cat does? A cat doesn't even stick its tongue in the water. It just goes down to right to the surface and pulls up really fast. And a, a little column of water follows, uh, follows up with surface tension, and they bite it. They do that four times a second. Its tongue is moving at the rate of one meter, which is about one yard per second. Wow. And so, uh, and then they don't, they don't wait about every fourth or sixth time that they do that, and then they swallow. But, you know, that's just an example. If you know how a cat is, you know no. you're going to use a drinking fountain, and that 50 bucks is going to be the cheapest thing you can do to help ensure your cat's health. It's funny about people. One last, one last thing on sure. behaviorally, too, since you asked me. Sure. Uh, pardon me. On behavior, you know the you know the cats are just different. I, we have four dogs and four cats, and I, I joke to somebody that this is the the greatest book with the world's lousiest title. You know, your cat, the owner's manual. You know, are you really the owner of something where you're bringing the wild inside? You're never going to completely tame a cat to be to to every human whim and desire and things. And those of us that love cats, you wouldn't want it that way anyway. Uh, you know, we like their independence. We like their athleticism. We like their, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that on any given day, you know, they may be the same cat in the same spot for 10 days in a row, and then the 11th day, it's like, you know, where's Colby at? I don't know, where's he at? And, you know, he's disappeared into these Lego blocks of hay or he's in the far end of the house for whatever reason. Is jealousy a problem with cats as much as it is with dogs? Well, you know, on this tour, I'm visiting 25 cities, and I'm hearing from people all the time there's lots of problems with inner cat aggression 
uh, you know, it's one of the things I'm hearing. I'm really interested in what the feedback is from literally thousands of people I've met that are cat owners. And so many cat owners are, are putting up with cats that aren't using the litter box. They're putting up with the fact that, you know, they have this, this new couch that they got at uh, Ikea, and the cat's doing hieroglyphics on it or tic-tac-toe on the new entertainment center, uh, that there's hair all over the house, uh, that there's this inner cat aggression, and, you know, one cat's being bullied. And, and the great thing is, is there's, you know, we have solutions for that stuff in, that's the secret surprises and solution. Well, maybe one of the secret is the fact that a cat's tongue doesn't go in the water or the fact that uh, cats don't have a collarbone that's rigid or all cats are born with blue eyes. But mm-hmm. some of these solutions are, are how do you dramatically reduce shedding? How do you get cats to use the litter box? How do you uh, tame this inner cat aggression? And, and you gotta, you got to know this. You know, with, we always tell our kids, uh, I talked to both my kids on Father's Day, and, you know, we reminisce about different things. And I always tell them you can be anything you want to be, you know, one one human, one vote. We're all the same. We're here in that election cycle. Well, guess what? It's not that way with a cat. There is not one cat, one vote. We're all equal. There is a hierarchy that develops. And what you want to do is within the confines of that hierarchy that's going to happen no matter what, you want to create a benevolent dictator. Mm-hmm. You want somebody that's like the, the, the queen mother on her diamond jubilee that everybody goes, boy, oh, <laughs> you know, I get a little frustrated, but you know what? I really like her. Right, so. right, 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 right. Yeah. I, I, you know, one of the things, by the way, we're talking to Dr. Marty Becker for 16 years on Good Morning America and now part of the core team, Oz, on the Dr. Oz Show and a spokesperson for a great new site, VetStreet.com, VetStreet.com. And we're talking about his brand new book, Your Dog, The Owner's Manual. I mean, Your Dog, The Owner's Manual actually was the, the, the latest book now in paperback, but the new one just out, Your Cat, The Owner's Manual. Hundreds of secrets, surprises, and solutions for raising a happy, healthy cat. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, you, it's, it's so many. Well, let's we'll just take some call. Actually, I'll tell you, we have a, a recorded message here from one of the listeners and also a bunch of tweets, and I'm going to print some more. So here we go. This is our first one. Hi, I'm Ian from New York, and I have a question for Dr. Becker. Um, we have two young cats we acquired as kittens and two senior cats. During the day, they all have the run of the house, but at bedtime, we lock the young ones up in separate rooms upstairs because they're often pesky, they harass the older cats, and generally make mischief. My question is whether being isolated overnight is detrimental to the young ones, and can it prolong their mischievous phase? Thank you very much. Bye. All right, Dr. Becker. That's a great, that's a great one. You, you know what? I had so many people on this tour talk about this cat gets this look, and then it just attacks me. Or this one, I'll go by and it'll fly out and grab, bite my ankles, you know. Or I'll try to sleep at night and I leave an arm, and if it dangles off, the cat grabs it, you know. Remember, these cats were born for athleticism. Their bodies were born for movement. There's the wild inside every cat, no matter how fat, how old inside there it is. And kittens are the equivalent of Cirque du Soleil performers. I mean, they're the fly <laughs> on the drapes. <laughs> That's true. Bounce from one thing to the other, crazy, kinetic, massive, jumping, lurching, biting, twisting cats. A lot of kittens that are adopted got either abandoned early or adopted too early where they didn't learn proper play. And biting human skin, by the way, is never appropriate for any cat, period. You, mm-hmm. you don't want to play with them and let them, oh, they're just biting lightly. No, don't use human skin uh, you always want to have a toy for them and and for these cats that are uh, you know kind of a mismatch you got to remember for a cat you know i always hear a pet you know a dog year is seven years a cat year is six or seven years the first year of a cat's life is equivalent to 18 human years wow and those of us that have had children know what the terrible twos and the teenagers are like and that's one of the reasons why I often encourage people to get a get an adult cat from the shelter whose whose behaviors have already manifested itself. You know, gets along well with dogs, doesn't like other cats. You know, bulletproof, likes dogs, cats, men, women, children. Now they can kind of tell you what behaviors there are. But this too shall pass. I mean, those little kittens that are just crazy, um, and she's putting up separately at night. You know, that that will pass. It doesn't stunt them to not be with the other cats and. I think one of the things we do with dogs and cats is we 
and, and I, we're guilty of this too. My wife and I have been married 33 years, and when the dogs get us trapped on a you know semi paralytic state on about six inches of this king size bed, and we don't want to move because we don't want to wake the dogs up, mm-hmm. so they sleep 18 out of 24 hours, and we we have chronic sleep deprivation, and they're always perpendicular. Exactly right. Yeah, tension springs, you know, <laughs> holding you up on the edge of the bed. But you, you've got to, you know, we need our sleep. And if, if you have severe allergies to dogs or cats, you need to make the bedroom a pet-free zone. You just can't sleep with them. If, you, you know, if it really your health is at risk, uh, you know, nose-to-nose, breathing in that dander all night long is detrimental. And if you, you know, are in sleep deprivation, it's affecting your, your health and your productivity. You may have to make the bedroom a pet-free zone. There's a great toy I saw at Petco. I can't remember the name of this toy, but it was fascinating to hear people that used it. And, and if they hadn't told me about it, I would have never never noticed it. But it's a, it looks like a little cage, and uh, like a little plastic cage, like a lantern that had a, a mesh on it, plastic mesh around it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's only activated at night, so it, it it has a sensor like a night light, and it's only activated when something comes near it. So only at night, only when the cat comes near it, and it activates this fan. And it blows up these little uh, plastic fireflies, and then this kind of strobe light hits them, so it looks like they're blinking off and on. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and these people were telling me, you know what, the cat used to bug me, bug me, bug me, bug me. Now it goes out and plays with this thing and drags it around the house, and so the cat doesn't bother me anymore. So, you know, there's another uh, another solution for these cats, and... And, and you know, at some point, uh, we need to talk about pheromones, because pheromones are almost the, you know, the miracle cure for so many things that are frustrations for cat owners. Or- yeah, we're not, we'll, we'll talk about that specifically, but we'll, just sleeping with your cat, or dog for that matter, if you have generally good health, is there any problem? No, no, none at all. Here's one thing you, you see on the news. There's a new uh, a new book out called Zubiquity, which is a, a, a you know, a runaway hit. It's about... Uh, diseases that people and pets share together, and and you have to you have to think about this. We think of the scary zoonotic diseases, zoonosis, zoonotic diseases. Those are diseases transmissible from animals to people. So what are the really scary ones? Ebola virus. Wow, well, I'm not going to come in contact with a monkey probably. Mad cow disease. Eh, one case every every what years in the United States. Avian influenza. Well, that was really scary, but nobody in the United States has ever got it. Rabies. Ooh, still hear about a case of those every once in a while. Very painful to treat. Uh, uniformly fatal if contracted. Maybe I think maybe it's one person that didn't die from that. But the most common things are ringworm, which is really a fungus you get from you know mainly younger kids and older people. You get uh, cat scratch disease. Uh, our our friend uh, Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. <laughs> cat scratch fever. <laughs> well, it's actually called cat scratch disease, and that's caused by. Uh, Hemobartonella, which is a bacterium that's in their it's in their claws. And by the way, that is the most common zoonotic disease. And we now we know that the Hemobartonella is transmitted by fleas and ticks and other biting insects. So really, to protect the human family, and there may be a link. It's some research coming out that may show a link between Hemobartonella and rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome, and um, uh, what's the other one? Fibromyalgia in humans. So we've we haven't been very good about treating cats for for these parasitic diseases. And in a new year long study of Gulf Coast cats all the way around the you know the East Coast and the Gulf Coast, twenty seven percent of all cats had been exposed to heartworm disease. They had the antibodies against heartworm. Now, this gets worse. Ten percent had a current adult heartworm infestation. So these little spaghetti like things that live in the dog's heart, they actually live in the lungs of the cat, uh, and they're. There is no treatment for dogs. There is a treatment. Uh, recently, the active ingredient was was uh, unavailable, and so it became everybody panicked. But you can treat a dog with adult heart disease. There is no treatment for cats. Uh, but here's the part that, that got me: twenty eight percent of the cats that were positive were indoor only cats. Wow. So you think, well, how you know my cat's indoors? It doesn't yeah. need to be vaccinated. It doesn't need parasite control. That means that mosquito gets in, and you know these these drones we have that are that are doing these missions over Afghanistan right. and Western uh, Pakistan, guess what? That mosquito is a drone, and it comes in, and its sensors see your pet and come, come in for the, the three-point landing, and it can take just one mosquito bite to cause heart disease in a dog or a cat. Wow. And then, so, yeah, right through the screen. Yeah, so if you, or you're just going in the door, just yeah. walking in your yeah, door and right. it follows you in. So just remember that uh, by lifetime parasite control, 
Uh, I like a product called Revolution. Revolution is by Pfizer Animal Health. Uh, I joke that it kills everything but the cat. It it takes care of heartworm disease, uh, heartworms, fleas, internal parasites, even ear mites. It's a once a once a month topical. You just squirt the contents on the back of the cat's neck, and uh, this invisible whole body protection that lasts a month. But what you're doing is you're protecting the human family as well as the cat. So if you're going to be sleeping with your pet, make sure that pet is healthy and clean. Yeah, that's and, your message. Yeah, and, and here's here's the good thing too. What, what I want to stress too, there's a study out of uh, University of Minnesota Stroke Research Center, a very well received peer reviewed study. If you have a cat, you're forty percent less likely to have a heart attack or a stroke. That that is huge. Just think if if we forty percent forty percent. Just think if we had a pill that we could take. We could take this pill every day. And we have a forty percent less likely chance of a heart attack or a stroke. That's incredible. Uh, so, but it's a it's a cat, and cats are, don't just make us feel good. They're good for us. And unless you're very young, you're very old, you're immunocompromised, like you have uh, you know some some condition that. In, 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 uh, inhibits your immune system, or if you're on, uh, you know, say you're a, 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 tra- a transplant patient or somebody that has to take uh, immuno, immuno drugs, you're really not at risk. And what I always think about, think of a veterinarian. When is the last time you heard of a veterinarian that contracted one of these zoonotic diseases and, and you know, ended up hospitalized or dead? It just doesn't, doesn't happen. happen. Yeah, I wondered about that, yeah. yeah. But, but just like your grandma told you, wash your hands before you eat. Make sure you use a product that takes care of internal parasites in dogs and cats. Uh, don't mix the the dog or cat dishes with the human dishes. Don't don't mix them together. You know, try to wash them wash them separately. And uh, you know what? You're gonna you're gonna be okay. Yeah. You're, you're you're gonna have all the benefits and very little of the risk. And if you're gonna wash them, uh, use the high temperature setting. You said I think in the dishwasher, right? Yes, you're yeah, exactly the high temperature. And you, you know, one of the things we're finding out. That's that's literally, uh, you know. Uh, again, uh, my writing partner Gina Spada for and I've written uh, your dog, the owner's manual, and your cat, the owner's manual. If you want the one of the single best things you can do for a pet uh, to reduce their skin problems. Now, skin problems are the number one reason people take pets to the vet, and that's to bathe them more frequently. And that that means for a dog to bathe them once a week, uh, in, in literally year round, twice a week if you can during the height of the allergy season mm-hmm. and you're flushing these allergy triggers that get absorbed through their skin. You have to think of a dog or a cat like a Swiffer or a or a dust mop with four legs. And they <laughs> yeah. Get all this stuff on them. So How often for, do you bathe the cat? Well, for cats, you know, you're you're thinking, "Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, this guy's lost his marbles." Well, here's what you do for a cat. You're not going to bathe a cat every week, but what you can do is use a product called the Ferminator. And the Ferminator when you think of allergies for cats, they groom themselves. Now, I love to watch. I've actually sat and watched a cat uh, for the whole process of starting with this paw and then moving <laughs> to this part of their body. And it's it's actually, they do it the same way every time. If you ever watch them, they'll start on the same foot and go through the same, you know, it's like watching the Nutcracker, you know, that this ballet is, is beautifully uh, uh, conducted and passionately played, you know, That's they do funny. the same ritual. But there's a protein in their saliva that dries and becomes part of dander. And so when, you're, when you use like a ferminator, you're actually, the hair is just the carrier for the dander that contains the protein yeah, in the saliva that yeah. triggers the allergy. So the ferminator takes off the loose hair and the undercoat that has the dander, and it ends up in the trash can and not in your house or on you. And then you just take an unscented baby wipe and just wipe your cat down. Uh, you know, if you really have bad, I'll just wipe it down every day. I do recommend bathing a cat uh, completely, you know, where you, where you actually bathe it with shampoo two to four times a year, either, you know, once a quarter or, mm. or twice a year. And so then people think, oh, right, uh, you know, I'm going to end up with one of these YouTube videos, you know, when I do this cat. Yeah, Here's- I've tried it before, not with my present cat, Kaylee, but uh, in, in the past. Yeah, and you get scratched. Well, cat is called a queen and when the queen packs her kittens from nest to nest you always see these images of her picking up by the neck and the little kitten is limp and this also works for big cats in africa you see them you know the mother lion packing this this baby around and they're just limp in their mouth uh by the way a, a litter of kittens is also called a kindle 
just like the <laughs> e-reader. So if you want a little trivia, the queen is packing the Kindle from nest to nest. The kittens are limp in her mouth. Well, that neural pathway works throughout their adult life. And you take this clipnosis. It was developed by uh, Dr. Tony Buffington and some of his associates at the Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine. It looks kind of like a hair clip or a, a binder clip of sorts that you would put on a sheath of papers. But you just clip it on the back of the cat's neck on the, on the dorsal midline, so the top of the neck behind the base of the skull, right where a mother would pick him up. And you can give a cat a pill. You can give a cat a bath. You can brush it out. You can clean its ears. Uh, anything. And, and when you're done, you just take the clip off. And wow. the, it's like a magician or a hypnotist snapping their fingers. They just come back to normal. Well, well give me that name again because I'm going to be It's called Clipnosis, C-L-I-P-N-O-S-I-S. And they're so cheap. I mean, they are dirt cheap. You don't, you don't get something, you know, think, well, I'll just use a hair clip because it has this special design where it works really well and it's easy to take off and on and so reasonable. If you have a really, really big cat or you have a cat that's kind of a, you know, a high temperature one, you know, you just look at it and, you know, you know, see what you can do. You don't wait till they get really agitated or worked up. You just, you put one on and then if you have a great big cat or one that's uh, a little more fraxious, you can just put one, two, three, four of them on them, just, just, just sequence them right down the start at the base of the neck and just moving down towards the tail just on the skin yeah on the skin and, and what I, I gotta what try I, that what i do when i do it in practice because i'll use a lot of times to trim nails or to uh draw blood i can draw blood just by myself with nobody scruffing the cat just by using clipnosis but i'll i'll say listen i'm going to use this on your cat but before we do i want you to see that it doesn't hurt and i explain how it works and then i put it on my skin and then I say, would you like to feel it? And most people do. And they, they realize, you know, it doesn't hurt. And then we put it on the cat. Yeah. But it's, uh, there, there's your answer to how you're able to groom a cat. And and it's one, one other product, by the way, for shedding. There's a product from Kong called Zoom Groom. And this is really good for dogs or cats. If mm -hmm. you are bathing them, it works the shampoo down into the deep layers of the skin it feels so good i use it dry um you know you can only use a fermenter every couple of weeks but you can use the the zoom groom daily but you rub it on your your dogs or cat and they just they're just moving around just purr and they're purring and their tail is just doing that real languishing i'm so happy i'm so happy or the dogs they, they do that kind of uh, i make it kind of sound their, their rear end goes up and down <laughs> and the the hair just gets sucked up into the zoom groom. It's some kind of an electrostatic thing. And when you're done, you just got this mat of hair in there. And and I vacuum it off. But other people, you can just pick it out with your hands and throw it in the trash can. Great. I'll tell you what. Let's take a break here. When we come back, pheromones. We're going to talk about. I got a bunch of tweets and questions for Dr. Marty Becker, America's vet. Your cat, the owner's manual. Hundreds of secrets, surprises, and solutions for raising a happy, healthy cat. The book is out. Don't go away. And we're just going to roll hey, here. Hey, you know what? I, lo I, love, I love how you end that. You have your voices so cool at the end. I love that. How you <laughs> tell, I freak, I love it. Hey, hold on just a second. I mean, sure, let me take start your, some. I'll be right back. Yeah, take your time. Okay, brother, I'm back. All right, man. Here we go. Stand by. <clears throat> Many times on this show you say, one of our favorite guests on the program. Well, you know, I don't say that often. And of those favorite guests, Dr. Marty Becker, just about the best. Just about my favorite because the reaction we get from listeners who call in the show, and in this case today, we are actually got a bunch of tweets we're going to get to in just a bit. But not only do I love dogs and cats and animals, but Dr. Becker is just such a great guest. He's so into it, and I'm proud with all the media that this guy does that uh, of all his shows, 
because of the listeners who have contacted us. He says this is his favorite of all, and he said it on the air and off the air, and to me that's an honor. Dr. Becker, it's great to have you back. Well, you know what? We I had the pleasure of getting to meet you finally. We've been long-distance fans for many, many, many years, but the just the response of people, you know, the interest in people and the, the passion they have for pets, and, oh, I just love it. I look forward to it every time. Even sometimes I don't even have the time to do it. But I always work it in because it's one of one of my very favorite things to do. I appreciate that a lot. Before we go to the uh, pheromones and also the questions from listeners, uh, you mentioned two products. One that cat nighttime toy is that? Could you give the name of that nighttime toy? Or, you know or was what? it a I, fountain? Was it a fountain or was it a toy? I, w- I, I don't remember the name of it. It okay. was on it was on closeout at Petco, which regularly was like twenty five dollars, and it was only five dollars. It was just go to your local Petco and find this thing, but it's. It's, here's how I would describe it. You know, like the lanterns you used as a kid when you were camping, you know, those Coleman lanterns that kind of had that shape? Yeah. But it was only about eight inches high, and then instead of glass around it where the lantern would have been, it had a mesh, a plastic mesh. But it's, uh, I don't know if somebody can find it online, too, but it, it had, it's motion-activated. It only comes on at night, and this little battery-operated fan turns on. These little, these little plastic fireflies flutter up. The yeah. light hits them. But I had so many people tell me about it, and then I, I would help people find it in Petco's. And, uh, and then I had some people email me back and say, oh, God, that thing was terrific for my cat that's waking me up in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah, I was getting a bunch of instant messages uh, during the break. All right, let's go to some of these tweets. This is from Janice Phillips. I'm considering adopting a cat or kitten. I've only had dogs before. Any advice or hints for me? You hadn't had cats before, you said? That's right. Only dogs, and she's yeah. considering adopting a cat or cat. Well, it, what I would do is I would look to adopt an adult cat from the shelter that loves dogs. Now, now you never know you know, how your dogs are going to be, but th- there, there is truly some dog-cat things that are like the cartoons, where it's dogs versus cats, and, and where it's just, you know, they just never get along. And one of the things about cats that happens, remember, we have four dogs and four cats that almost have in ranch, and if the cats run, like like three of our cats, just the dogs are around and they just like look at them, just ignore them, and everybody, uh, you know, they're not best buddies, but they all get along. And one of these cats wants to run. It sees the dogs, and what happens when that cat runs? Those dogs just head right out after it. And this is a cat that's been up the tree about three times that, uh, you know, including the last time it cost me $300 to have uh, somebody come out with a giant, scissor lift you know like a cherry picker yeah because it was up the tree for five days and and uh you know i knew enough from a veterinarian without drinking and stuff and this was an older cat that it wasn't going to make it so you know we we had it hauled out of there but um with find, find go to the shelter and find this cat that's bulletproof this one that's been around other dogs and because dogs kind of get a sense of one you know the one cat that gets along and if it doesn't run or anything they're really good with it the other thing you can do if you want to amp up your chances of everything going well is to use the pheromone, the, the dog appeasing pheromone. It has a new name, by the way. It's called Adaptil, A-D-A-P-T-I-L. Uh, so Adaptil, and then you steal away, and you're going to appeal to their pheromonic senses, and that really helps introduce them, at least for the first few weeks. You know, when I, the, the shelter I uh, adopted Kaylee, they had cats in a certain area that were dog friendly. So the, they, they know right off the bat because a lot of these kittens and cats are in foster homes with dogs. And, and you can really find out. So ask about that. That's a great way to go. All right. This is Elliot Cox. I'd like to know why our outdoor cats, they adopted us, feel the need to bring us presents from time to time. It's not uncommon to open the door to the back deck and find a bird, chipmunk, mouse, or most recently a rat laying there beside their food dishes. I've tried to reassure them that the gifts aren't necessary, but I don't think they speak English. That's Elliot Cox. (laughs) Well, you know what? This cat is one of the world's most lethal killing machines. In evolution, the more you, the better the hunter you were, the more you could sleep. Humans, before the age of guns and dogs helping with the hunt, we were very poor hunters. And so, you know, we were hunter-gatherers. We had to be out there, uh, you know, 16 hours a day looking for something to eat. And so we could only sleep eight hours. Meanwhile, these killing machines, these cats, 
these stealth fighters that could just walk with the, you know without a sound and detect a rustle in the leaves or a mouse's heartbeat from 30 feet away uh, that have these amazing canine uh, teeth, these fang teeth, and these these wicked Edward Scissorhands kind of uh, Freddy Krueger slashing knives sheathed inside here, ready to whip out at a moment's notice. They were such good hunters that they could sleep eighteen to twenty hours a day. They could literally, or they could, yeah, they could literally just hunt for four to six hours. But in that time, you know, that four to six hours, eighty percent of that time was spent in pursuit of food, and that's why it's important to. You know, not just put food in a bowl, which we'll talk about in a minute. You want to recreate the hunt in the home. But for them to bring back a kill and to share it with uh, with uh, the pack, to share it with the Kindle, that's like the world's greatest thing and the pride. And so that's really what your cat is doing. It's a, it's a, It'd be like Mother's Day and you get a phone call, a card, and flowers. <laughs> that, that's what it's like. That's great. That's great. That's great. So that's a, that's a great thing. The uh, misconceptions about cats, I think cats get a raw deal. I noticed that uh, uh, people who have cats many times will say, well, I have cats. It's my wife's cat, but uh, I, I'm a dog person. I like cats, but I, I'm a dog person. And and I kind of understand that. I was like that for a while, too. I, I prefer dogs. But you know what? After living with a cat and a dog, I love them both. So the misconceptions about cats, we talked about some of them. One of them... Well, they're not affectionate. Uh, talk about that, because they are. I think they are. Well, you know, I have uh, four dogs and four cats, and, and I, I've got to be honest. If uh, And people ask me this. I don't mealy mouse around. If I had to pick, if I could only pick one, I'm a dog person. But I, I love cats. Um, you know, it's it's close. And I love cats because they're so different. When, when I come up to the – we had feral cats that wouldn't have had any other home, so they're barn cats. But they are so – so affectionate and i just love that athleticism where they can sit there on the ground and spring and go you know four or five times their body length from a standing jump or fly between one haystacks to the next or just that ultra quick thing when a mouse scurries out of those lego blocks of hay and uh, you know this cat that's 10 years old just this flash of fur that gets a but you know, cats are uh, also they uh, they they love to be touched. You, there are certain areas, you know, we talk about this in in your cat, the owner's manual too. There are certain areas that cats like to be rubbed on or touched under the chin, around the side of their cheek where that cheek pheromone is at the base of their tail, and there's other areas that you touch at your own risk. I call it the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> yeah, there is. And That's when right. you go to the Bermuda Triangle, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that goes in there that doesn't come out unscathed. It's a fine line too. You just pass it by half an inch you're, yeah. you're, you're there yeah exactly right. and you know this cat is both prey and predator it's a weird ecological niche so when they're in the predator mode that's why they like to get up high and look around you know there were supper going to be at and they're also in the in the prey mode they're up safe when they're up high but when the cat's on its back that's usually about time it's going to be dead you know so in, in evolution it's on its back its claws are out its teeth are there it's it's biting it's scratching and something's trying to eviscerate it yeah. So that's why when you get, if a cat's on its back, and they'll often do that, they'll often roll over and expose their stomach, and you rub it, and and they go from delight to bite. That's in about right. Three seconds. It's curious about that because my cat loves the you know the chest is fine, but you get a little bit too low, and it's interesting. She'll bite, and then as if she realizes she's, she's catching herself, she starts she licks me. Yeah, yeah. You just you just don't want to. It's just not a good area to touch. You know, just go go back to the other areas. Because I even as a you know a veteran veterinarian and somebody that every once in a while I go in the wrong area too, and they what they'll do often they'll grab you with their claws and they'll just they'll just bite to let you know it's just, it's just reflexive. It's like uh, going to the doctor's office and they you know tap your knee to yeah, check your reflexes. Yeah. It's literally it, or somebody jumps out of the dark and you throw your arms up in the air to protect yourself. It's so reflexive, but. You know, often it's not your cat or something kind of gets haywire and they draw they draw blood or scratch you and you end up with cat scratch disease. Dr. Marty Becker, this is a question for both dogs and cats. The best way to extend your dog and your cat's life, and some of them are just simple things that we all could do, but we don't do, like brushing their teeth. Talk yeah. about that. This is, this is an easy one. If For dogs and cats, if you want to extend their life, you do you do two or three things. One is keep them near their ideal body weight. Now I, I can honestly tell you uh, on my granddaughter's uh, beautiful little head there. It, 
we all four of our dogs, all four of our cats, our three of our horses are all thin. They're all, you know, not ASPCA thin where somebody calls you in, you know, where they just look look sick. But, you know, you can feel their ribs. They don't have hanging down fat. You know, they have a, 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 a tucked in ad when you look from the side. Uh, when you look from uh, an aerial view on top, you can see an indentation at their waist, like an hourglass figure. Uh, so that's one thing. And that, and that just means less food in their bowl, you know, more miles on their feet, more activity. The second thing is daily oral care. Uh, we spoke about this on the show a lot for dogs. You know, we do brush our dog's teeth every day. When I say we, I should say my wife does. Uh, but only 5% of all pet owners do that. Uh, so, and, and as far as brushing your cat's teeth, listen, my cats have never seen a toothbrush. They're never going to see a toothbrush. If I, if I took one up, they'd probably think it was time for their, you know, every three year vaccinations stuck in my hand. But, um, what we do for them is we do do daily oral care. That's the key. And there's kind of a good, better, best for, for cats. Every, every, all cats have to drink. So that drinking fountain you use, you can get something from your veterinarian, or online, it's called CET, C period, E period, T period, oral hygiene rinse, and you just put it in the water. And so they're drinking something that helps keep their their mouth clean. The second thing is to take advantage of a cat's natural tendency to chew. And, you know, we're all giving them treats all the time. You know, we're getting, you know, whiskas and greenies and, and all these other things, this party mix of party flavors of salmon and tuna and stuff. There's a product called CET, Oral Hygiene Chews. It's by a company called Verbac. Both those products are by Verbac, V-I-R-B-A-C. But it's what we call prey size. It's about the size of what, you know, a small mammal that a cat would, would uh, catch and kill. When, when they bite into it, it kind of squeegees the plaque off of the tooth, and it has this dual enzyme action that cleans the teeth. And so what it does is you're just given a treat that they like. They like it so much, I give it as a treat in the hospital. When we have dogs come into Lakewood Animal Hospital, we give uh, CET Hextra Chews to dogs. That's rawhide that's impregnated with with uh, uh, chlorhexidine. Wow, and they actually can get that encrusted uh, plaque. You know, it's stuck on the. No, no, it won't. It won't get the that the brown stuff is the tartar. It won't get that up. But what you want to do is you it'll get the plaque off plaque becomes calcified and that becomes that mineralized kind of matrix that's that's brown uh, but what what you what you have to do is you know if you already have one that has it you've got a you know this will stop the progression and then you're going to have to get them professionally cleaned but what you'll find out is if you have a dog and you're using uh you know the CET extra chews mm-hmm. You'll go two to three times as long between professional cleanings. If if you have a cat that you're starting out and your cat's you know, got good oral health, you, you may go uh, you may go seven, eight, nine years before you have to have your pet's teeth cleaned. Wow, what is and, this called again? I always like to repeat this because we'll for, have this all on the website too. But go ahead, what is it for, called? For dogs, for dogs, it's called C. It's C period E period T period uh, Hextra H E X T R A choose. The company is Verbac V A R. V-I-R-B-A-C. And for cats, it's C-E-T, Oral Hygiene Chews by Verbac. Now, now let, me, let me tell you the proofs in the pudding here. We have four dogs and four cats. Of the four dogs and four cats, you know, the, the Golden Retriever is 12. Uh, the little Coyote is about, this little canine cocktail we have is about 10. Cora is about 9. Gracie, our newest lab pit bull cross, she's uh, probably 4. And then the cats are all above the age of 10. So they're, you know, anywhere. We got them astray, so we don't know for sure, but between 12 and 14. Only Coyote has ever had to have his teeth professionally clean. Then I'm a veterinarian. I could do it easily. But because we do daily oral care, they don't need it. And Coyote, Coyote's teeth were just perfect, except he, a lot of small dogs get these things where the bone just dissolves as they get older, kind of like when humans start losing their teeth. And so his incisors in the front got loose, and they got little pockets of infection, so he had to pull some of his front teeth out. But uh, the, his grinding teeth, his, uh, you know, his fang teeth, which are really important for dogs so they can, they can grow, pick things up and pant and hold their tongue in place, 
absolutely zero periodontal disease just because we do something for daily oral oh, care. That's very cool. Now, if you uh, if you have a situation where there's plaque, can you get it off yourself, or do you have to get a professional cleaning? Uh, you got to get a professional cleaning. Okay. And this is one of the things in some states and some areas. There's people that will volunteer to do a a uh, an anesthesia free dental cleaning. It doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is the First of all, can you you know imagine on a cat no, trying the to pain? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard enough to give it a pill, let alone you know, open its mouth up and clean it. But the 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 tartar that brown mineralized makes it goes up under the under the gum line. So you've actually under anesthesia, you go up under the gum line like an iceberg, and you clean it off, and then you polish it. Well, one other thing too, there is a new product out from Sanovi. This. Uh, this other veterinary company that is a dental sealant that you can use on dogs or cats, and it lasts six months. So it's a, it's a brand new product. It uh, is applied by your veterinarian, and then then if you can't brush your teeth or do the daily oral care, you can use that dental sealant, which is a brand new product. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. Back to your tweets with Dr. Marty Becker, America's Vet, the new book, Your Cat, the Owner's Manual, Hundreds of Secrets, Surprises, and Solutions for Raising a Happy, Healthy Cat. It is a great book. It really, it's available on Kindle and VetStreet.com, and we'll give you some more links when we get back. Need to get a drink of water there, Dr. Becker? No, I'm okay. All right. Oh, you're doing great. I appreciate that. And uh, uh, what was I going to ask? Yes, uh, is there another website in addition to VetStreet? Do you have your own website you want me to promote, right? No. No, just just keep plugging that straight for oh, that's oh. for me. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, stand by. It's good to have you back, Dr. Marty Becker. We're talking about dogs, cats, taking your questions and your tweets at If It Rocks on Twitter or Facebook under my name, Alan Handelman, H A N D E L M A N. A great website. Resource of information, you're going to want to bookmark it, vetstreet.com, vetstreet.com, where you'll see all the links uh, for Dr. Becker because he's the spokesperson. All right, Dr. Becker, let's uh, let's talk about those pheromones. There's, you mentioned it several times, and pheromone technology, this is a kind of a breakthrough. Go ahead and talk about that. Well, you know, when cats rub against you with their cheek, they're depositing a pheromone on you called the feline cheek pheromone. And it's basically the good housekeeping seal of approval for cats. I've checked it out. It's been tested. It's safe. It's secure. And what, what cats will, will rub you, you know, it's this great sign of affection. I've checked you out. I love you. They'll mark areas in the, you know, like the edges of the, the couch or a corner of a, a room. And basically it's kind of like a, you know, it's like a, a highway it's an escape route if they ever need to, that they know these areas that are safe. And what, what you can do if you have a cat that uh, these pheromones are like, are something that's only detectable to the cat, like the, the dog appeasing pheromone that uh, mother secretes in her nipples starting about three days of age to puppies. The cats can't smell it. Humans can't smell it. Uh, and, and same with feel away. Only cats can smell it. So here, here's the places we use it. You, you know, you, you, Alan, you've been able to see the cover of the book, and on the cover of the book, I'm sitting there on the ground in a photo studio with one of these giant white backgrounds so that it just, you know, you can't, it's invisible, you can't see any lines or anything. Right. Those aren't my cats. Those are three different owners with three different cats, none of which had ever met each other. So imagine this scenario. You're asked, Alan, to take your cat into a photo studio for a photo shoot. You're going to meet two other cat owners with their cats, and they're all going to sit on Dr. Becker's lap, who they haven't met, and we're going to take some photos for a book cover. You think, right, are you kidding me? This is unbelievable, because I thought these had to be your cats or cats that certainly you're familiar with, and they know each other. No, no, I'd never I'd never met the owners. I'd never met the cats. Uh, none of us had certainly ever been in a photo studio together. Uh, and so how did this, why are these cats so relaxed that they look like my cats? It's because two days before the photo session, we plugged in two of these feel away uh, diffusers. And these diffusers plug into an outlet, and it's, it, it's like a Glade one you get, or a Bath and Body Works, you know, you get this thing that just puts a scent into the room. They're like that. Uh, so we plugged those into the studio, and then uh, what I did is I gave each of the owners a, a little spray bottle of feel away. So it's like cologne. You just spray it, and a little mist comes out. And I told them, spray it in the kennel. 
the, the night before you bring them in. The morning you come in, spray a little more in there, and then cover the carrier with a towel that has the sense of home. Don't get one that's out of, just out of the laundry, but get one that's been hanging around there. And uh, so these cats came in nice and relaxed, and then I was wearing that stuff like cologne. So I had it all over me, just spritzed it on me. So that's why those cats just sit there. That's incredible. Cat. If you don't have the book, go online, just look at the cover and see these cats. They all, I mean, I don't know if that was just an instant that they were like that. How long did they sit on you? How many, how many takes did they we, have to we, do? We were, we were there two hours. <laughs> no, we, we have, we have incredible, incredible numbers of pictures. They were relaxed the whole time. That's very and, cool. And that, I'm try and that. that picture I, I tell you is not photoshopped at all that is a real deal photo with these cats that can really relax so so where, where does this come in head why would you need a pheromone if you got a cat that's not using the litter box if there's inner cat aggression if there's if there's scratching this area in your house and it's driving you crazy you plug this this pheromone into the wall outlet feel away and you start seeing an improvement in just a few days. And you can have up to 90% improvement in inappropriate elimination, the clawing, the inner cat aggression. And in fact, one of the places we stopped on the tour, I talked to a feline only uh, practitioner, this veterinarian, and she says, you know, she uses feel away. I think she has six cats. She uses feel away. And rather than, you know, making a note, okay, it's the first of the month, it's time to use the revolution on the cats for the parasite control, and I got to get a new feel away dispenser. She just notices the cats start not getting along. Like, they'll hear this, you know, or one cat will jump out and take a swipe at another. And she goes, oh, gosh, the feel-away dispenser must be out. So she goes over there and plugs the refill in. And you know what? Later that day, it's like uh, kumbaya again. Well, you know, it's, if, if there was a drug like that for people, they'd make it illegal. <laughs> you, know, you know what I call it? I call it happy hour for cats. It's, it's like... <laughs> When you work with people and the hectic growls and day to day, everybody gets on each other's nerves and and just you know cranky and there's always a you know maybe a, a, a emotional bully at work and then you go out for a few drinks you know and after a while my gosh everybody's slapping each other on the back <laughs> and toasting and everybody's yeah. happy and it's kind of like happy hour for cats but it just comes in the in the form of a of a feel away pheromone and one other thing too. Uh, if I wasn't a veterinarian, I wouldn't want to take my cats to the vet. It is so stressful on the cat, so stressful on the owners. I mean, they, they try to stuff them in the kennel, and they get bitten, and the cat is like a furry jack-in-the-box. You actually have a panting on the way to the clinic, and, you know, dog panting, that's okay. you got a cat panting. They are really stressed out. And so here's what you do. You know, we've been we've been talking about this on your show for a while now, but we've worked to create a fear free practice at uh, at our practice in, in Lakewood Animal Hospital in Northern Idaho, and many other practitioners around the country are doing this as well. Is here's how you start out: you make it a you make the the carrier uh, what I call a fun furniture. You don't bring it out the night before you go to the vet. You don't bring it out the morning you go to the vet. You have it out all the time. It might be you know in the corner of a room somewhere, but that is a place where when you go to the pet store and you get this new um, Merrick's Cornucopia uh, or Merrick's Thanksgiving Day Feast or you get some, you know, Imes or Science Diet or some other tasty treat for it, you put it in there. You got these new, uh, these CET oral hygiene chews or this new toy, you put it in there. And so they think, oh, this is the greatest place in the whole house is this kennel. And also, you get one. There's a new uh, kind from PetMate that I actually helped design that is a top load and front load. Oh, that's a great idea. I, I, that would be perfect. You know, you gave this suggestion in the book. Have an opening in the front uh, yeah. in the carrier, but have one on top. And tell everybody why. It makes so much sense. Well, well a lot of cats like to go in the front and then out the top. And, and so that's the natural way. But some cats like to go in the top and out the top. Some right. like to go in the top and out the front. It's, it varies. But this way, uh, and it also opens up like a clamshell. So when they come to the practice, we'll just take the top off and let, let them stay in the stay bottom. Stay where they area. are. And if you leave it around the house, as you said in the book, they, they, it's like a little uh, play thing. They, they love it. They have they their things in there. They absolutely yeah. love it. But the key, the key is those pheromones. You, you just want to have some around. Uh, let's say somebody's coming to visit that, uh, you know, that your cat doesn't like other strangers and they're coming to visit or somebody's coming over that has a dog or somebody's coming over with their kids and you can just uh, spritz that in the air and uh, it just doesn't stress these cats out. Right. Feel away is, you say, the, the, the brand you recommend? Yeah, that's the brand I recommend. There, there are other kinds. 
we've mentioned this on your show, I don't know how many times, but it bears repeating. Veterinary Recommended is the world's easiest thing to put on a product, and you see it on everything. You'll see it on a product. You know, Veterinary Recommended reduces you know, cuts bad breath or, or reduces tear staining or, you know, calms anxious pets. But in, in reality, it's the hardest thing to get as a veterinary recommendation. And feel away is actually one that is clinically proven to work where others aren't. Uh, like the CET oral hygiene shoes, you know, that's one that's proven to work. And, and by the way, you know, as far as like other products for dogs, uh, Greenies have the veterinary oral health care seal of approval. And and those little it look like a green toothbrush, which dogs love the taste of. It's really hard to get the veterinary oral health care seal of approval, but they went through the clinical tests and actually have that. So there's another one you see at all sorts of pet stores and things. It's a great product to help uh, you know act as an edible toothbrush as well. Dr. Marty Becker, the brand new book, Your Cat, the Owner's Manual. Hundreds of secrets, surprises, and solutions for raising a happy, healthy cat. The follow up to his great book, the same title, almost Your Dog. The owner's manual. Don't go away. All right, Dr. Becker. By the way, uh, I thank you for taking a big chunk of the time out. If you if you look like you want to cut it down because of anything, you just let me know during one of the quick little breaks we're doing here. No, we, we've got probably about another half hour left. Yeah, about a little, yeah. about a half hour, and, that, oh, sure. and on no. the air it'll be about two and a half hours. Oh no, I'm I'm doing fine. You're know, very cool. All yeah. right, all right, stand by. Here we go. Good to have you back. Dogs and cats. I have a dog. His name is Chewy. You've heard me talk about him many times. Dr. Becker has him. My uh, cat, Kaylee. A uh, quick update, by the way, since we have Dr. Marty Becker on America's Vet from Good Morning America and Dr. Oz. And uh, a great friend of the show. So he knows about uh, Chewy and his bout with cancer and a big tumor in his intestines or anus. I guess it was and it, ha- it had to be operated on. But fortunately, it worked. And uh, the the medication and the radiation, well, not radiation, but the chemotherapy worked, uh, and uh, he's cancer free. And but he's on a drug called Palladia right now because after about being cancer free for nearly a year, uh, some of the uh, X rays and showed that it was coming back just slightly, just slightly. So we caught it with uh, the Palladia, but giving it to him now every month, and it has shrunk and it's staying. Uh, under control so it's very expensive but it works and it's working for his type of cancer so anyway uh, mentioning my dogs any updates you want to talk about as far as the uh, cancer dogs cats sp- chewy specifically even about chemotherapy well not about chemotherapy but have you heard about this new drug that from pfizer called palladia oh right no it's a, it's one of those things that's um uh, um, one of those miracle kind of drugs that we're so lucky to have. And again, this book called Zubiquity. Anybody out there, I love this book, talking about the, the similarities between humans and animals and these diseases that we get. And, mm-hmm. and one of the things you have to remember, you know, we, we pioneered the use of vaccinations, vaccines for melanoma, you know, well before it's available for, for humans. And so some of these ways, we're on the very cutting edge of what works. And, you know, I have, I have to applaud you. You're one of those people... Uh, Alan, if if you were my client, you'd be one of those people. When I looked on the appointment log on the computer, I'd think, "Oh, thank you, <laughs> Alan's coming in with Chewy." And, and those are the ones you just look forward to seeing that comes in. And, and you know, we have a section in in both your cat, the owner's manual, and your dog, the owner's manual, about how to become a veterinarian's favorite client. And and what you do, I'll give you some of the things you do. One is you you show up on time for appointments. You. Uh, really have this deep love for your pet that, that transcends, uh, you know, affection in this deep love. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you know, you do what's what's recommended. So when somebody says, you know what, you, you've you've got to get the weight off this dog. It's overweight. You know, you you take it seriously. You or if it. you're a, if you're a smoker, and we tell you, listen, this secondhand smoke is killing your cat. And you know what, you quit smoking. Or when we tell you that you you've got to give this uh, this medication twice a day for 14 days you figure out a way to do it yeah you you pay your bills you recommend them to others and one of the little things is i'll tell you what everybody wants to take stuff in at thanksgiving or christmas for for um uh you know the, the veterinary hospital take it in right now take it in on a on the end of a crazy monday 
show up with a plate of of hot chocolate chip cookies, and you will be like the exalted one because it'll stand wow, out. Wow, that's a great idea, yeah. But I think more than anything else, I think more than anything else, the way you describe using this palladium is you go the extra mile for pets. And there's a saying, the extra mile is never crowded. And we so love these people that return a portion of what their pets have so generously given them that that will take a, you know, will spend the time and the money to go to a specialist, will spend the time and the money to go to a veterinary school if they need to, will, you know, I know times, Alan, when you slept, uh, you know, all night with your dog, you know, slept there. On the living room floor. On the living room floor. And so those are the things that you just think, you know what, this truly is the greatest profession on earth, and it's because of people like you that love their dogs and cats like their family. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know how you can't. You know, they're just amazing creatures, amazing creatures. All right, some more of these uh, great tweets that came in. we got a pile of them here. Uh, this sounds like a very generic one. Uh, we hear it all the time, but I guess it's an important one. Somebody by the name of Sam says, why should I spay or neuter my pet? Is it worth the expense? Now, I don't know where you've been, Sam, and don't mean to put you down, but I guess there's a lot of people who think, why bother? Well, you know what? There's always those people out there. There's the there's people out there that just think dogs and cats are are absolutely disgusting. And some people just hate dogs. Some people hate cats. Some people hate both. Sometimes those people had bad experiences growing up, where they were they were bitten, or you know, pets were treated like living garbage, and so they just don't have the you know the background that a lot of us have from them. I tell you, the the one thing about that I love about dogs and cats is you're never going to come home and find the dog's suitcases packed. You're you're never going to come home and look on the counter and there's a note from the cat saying, you know what, uh, I found somebody else. Yeah, you know, it's just I'm, not I'm working. I'm, yeah, it's not <laughs> working. I'm not getting anything out of this relationship. It's so predictable what that kind of uh, of a hero's welcome you get from them and that that affection connection that that you share. I've actually been at dog walks where there was five thousand people in New York City walking their dogs on this fundraiser. And the dogs would interact with other dogs, and the dogs would interact with other people. But in the end of that sea of people, they always came back to their owner with that kind of right. you know look in their eye. And you know, having written the book, The Healing Power of Pets, which by the way we're going to update for next year, we're going to do an updated version. It it came out exactly at nine eleven, the the week of nine eleven, and so this great book that I wrote with a former New York Times reporter got kind of buried in the the sadness of that event. We're going to do an update because we know a lot more now about uh, the healing power of pets, and especially as it relates to cats. But pets just aren't good, you know, make us feel good. They're actually good for us. And whether it's the crazy stuff like detecting cancer or it's helping, um, you know, peoples of natural disasters and soldiers, the PTSD, helping autistic children, improving children's uh, IQ scores of blunting uh, you know, dramatically decreasing allergies, asthma, and eczema for children, lowering serum cholesterol for adults, improving survivability of heart attack uh, survivors by eight times if you have a dog, uh, reducing the chance of a heart attack or a stroke by cat owners by 40%. Uh, you know, it's just like having, it's like having a life support system sure. cleverly disguised as a four-legged family member in your house. And once you think of it like that, you know, really, whether it's Chewy or Kaylee or anybody else's pets, there's really not much you wouldn't do to take care of that life support system. Absolutely, absolutely. The a couple of quick ones here. We got a lot of uh, people asking you about clipping after you brought it up before. They tweeted, "Is should you clip the back legs also? I guess people do the front paws, but how about the back paws? Yeah, the, the nails. Yeah, yeah, I clip, I clip them all. In a cat too. Yeah, it, but the, the key is to use the clip noses though. Just use the, you know, if you're going to trim their nails, just use the clip noses so you can do it safely. i got to get that. And then also, uh, you want to get, you know, cats love to scratch. I, I'm down here in L.A. right now doing this interview, and there's gang signs. And so gang signs are meant when one gang sees the other sign, this is my territory, you know, better stay away from this area. Well, that's what cats do by scratching. They you know, when our dogs wake up, they do that exaggerated stretch, you know, where their front end is low, their back end is high, they stick their feet out. It's so reflexive that they do it whenever they wake up. And uh, for cats, they like to stretch on something. So they'll get up and they'll extend their full length on this scratching post. And then they they tread sh- vertically, so they pull their claws towards them, uh, you know, raking. What they're doing is they're stretching 
they're uh, they're also any cl- uh, any claw sheath there the the nail sheath they're they're you know kind of basically sharpening their claws. It's extremely pleasurable for them to do that. What what some people make the mistake of is they don't know if their cat likes a, a vertical or horizontal surface. Some cats like to scratch on something like a you know a tree. Others prefer uh, a cardboard that lays horizontally on the ground. And you can't go wrong with having both kind of surfaces, a horizontal one and a vertical one. Some cats like rope or sisal, some like carpet, some like wood, some like cardboard. So, you know, I recommend... And, and with me, and this is a, a lot of people have this problem, I have scratchers all over the place, but she still likes to go on the couch on that top part and uh, uh, on the side of uh, uh, one of the chairs, and uh, she just doesn't get it. Well, or she here's... gets it or doesn't care. Well, here's here's what you do, though. We talk about this in the book because that's... that's... That's a common thing that people complain about or they just put up with. But what, what you do is you put a, you might have the wrong kind of surface. So if your cat is liking, you know, wood or fabric and you have rope or something, you might need a, a surface that is similar. But you want to put the appropriate scratching surface very near where they're doing it, like right next to the spot they're doing it. And then if you use that pheromone, the feel away, you're going to get them attracted to this area to do it. You can also just take them up there, uh, have a really nice treat there, and, and put their paws on it real lightly so you start to put the scent of their paws on that, that uh, scratching area. Ah. But, but here's the key. And my daughter, Mikkel, who's a, who's a you know, really well-respected trainer and she's the featured trainer on VetStreet.com, if you go to VetStreet.com, you can find some videos on this. But you can click or train cats to use a scratching area, and that's probably the best way. And I've seen, uh, it, you know, people like, oh, gosh, I don't have time to click or train. And click or train a cat, are you kidding me? I was just at the Denver Dumb Friends Animal League, which is kind of a crazy name for this extremely successful uh, animal uh, welfare organization in Denver. Mm-hmm. They click or train 8,000 cats a year. So they have these teams of volunteers that go in, and what they find out, if they click or train these cats, they're much less stressed, so they're more adoptable. And so these cats that are, you know, doing the inappropriate uh, scratching, what they do is they teach them when they go to the area you want them to do, they're, 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 they're clicked, and then they're given a treat. Then you can take these cats that have been in a pattern for years where they're just not using it and get them just within a few days of using the right place to scratch. If they're doing it in a place that's not appropriate, should you take action as soon as they start doing it, or what are they? No, no, you don't. You don't want to. You don't want to. What you don't want to do it's just like a dog that makes a mess somewhere. You don't want to yell at them or anything. You 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 only reward them when you catch things doing things right. So if that cat were doing it, it would not you know be ignored. I but see. when it when it uses the area and you you amp it up by using the feel away on it or putting some catnip on it, like mm-hmm. you could get some crazy catnip and tie it to the top. As soon as that cat's scratching on it. You click, you click it and reward it. Click it and reward it, and pretty soon it realizes, you know what, man, this is the this is the slot machine that's paying off Got every it. time, you know. Got it. And then, then, then after that, then you only have to do it every once. Well, you don't have to do it every time. Then just every few times. You see it doing it, you click it, you reward it, and it knows that's the place to go. Funny thing about cats, I think I've told you this before. I have one of those uh, lasers made for cats. It's a crazy laser. It has like it just vibrates all over the place, and she loves it, but. She knows what it is. She'll actually come up on the uh, table right next to me, and she sees it laying there, and she uh, she just reaches over and kind of rolls it and looks at me and just watches me and gives me the hint she wants to play. And she knows it's coming from this little thing, but yet she acts like it's a wild animal. It's like <laughs> it's so funny. Well, that's the thing about movement. See, cats are really quick at stuff that moves very quick because they're used to the chase. And and one of the things too, you know, one of our uh, you know, earlier tweets or something was about these cats that bring in all the, the you know, the birds and the chipmunks and stuff like that. Uh, I really recommend indoor cats if you can. They live three times longer. There's actually studies from Purdue University College of Veterinary Medicine. They live longer, and they can really uh, do tremendous deprivation to wildlife. There's so many, you know, birds and, and small mammals and stuff that are that are killed by them, and especially if you live in an area that, you know, is, is nature-sensitive, you know, an area mm-hmm. where there's, there's frogs and stuff like that. We've got to do our part to, uh, you know, to be a good steward of nature. And, and also, m- my mom is 87 years old. She's uh, uh, just a character. She's kind of like the far side lady meets Maxine, you know, just this real character. She gets so frustrated by the neighbor's cat coming in and, and urinating in her yard and then also torturing her dog. 
And you don't make good neighbors when you let your cats run uh, run wild. Yeah. So I, I really recommend their inside. And one of the things we're finding out with cats, too, there's a really good website called the Indoor Cat Initiative. That's uh, It's developed by the people at The Ohio State University, the same ones that develop Clipnosis. And there's all sorts of way in there, ways in there to provide enrichment activities for cats. And one of the things that you can do, and, and we talk about this in the book as well, is to expand the vertical space for cats. You're not going to build on and add another wing to the house to give them more space, but you can take a wall and you know go to uh, the home improvement store and buy some shelves that are big enough for one cat and kind of stair-step them up a wall. And you'll find these cats up there in different areas, just sitting there nice and relaxed. And you Yeah, know, they love it. They, they love, love it. it, yeah. The Indoor so Cat Initiative. The Indoor Cat Initiative, yeah. Now, oh, finish what you were going to say, and then uh, along these lines, uh, I, wanted, I got a tweet here from Jonathan in New York City. He wants you to talk about uh, protecting your pet from modern hazards, which you write about. But it's amazing to me that a cat and dog can even live in New York City uh, it takes a, a great owner to really keep a dog healthy in New York City, I imagine, and cats especially. They can't be outdoor cats in the city, can they? No. Well, you know, we're luckier with cats than dogs because cats, you know, cats don't just pick everything up. Like, you know, for for dogs, you drop a pill on the floor. You know, you one of your prescriptions, and they wolf it down. Uh, you, they get it. They sn- the super sniffer smells in your purse, and they get inside there and they eat. Uh, you know, gum that has xylitol in it. So there's lots, lots more poisonings for dogs and cats. But cats do face certain risks, like uh, uh, lilies, for example. You just can't have lilies and have cats. Now, I'm talking lilies that are indoors and outdoors, because so many kinds of lilies have something in that causes kidney failure, and they can chew on the leaves or just take a, a bite or two on the on the the floral part of it, and literally die of kidney failure. So we, we always say lilies are lethal. Don't have lilies around cats. There's uh, well, The biggest reason that we see pets die or go to animal poison control is people using dog flea and tick products on cats. You can't do that. You just Their they're, metabolism is just different, so that's why you, know, you want a feline-only product like Revolution that you use. And, uh, you know, there's cats every year that... that uh, you know, that do the high dive out of there. They're chasing a bug or something and go right through the open window or go through the screen. So you got to be really, really careful there as well. And, you know, this is not the not the time of year for, you know, where it's really cold outside. But in, in the wintertime, you always want to knock three times on the hood. You know, I always think of that old song, you better knock, knock, <laughs> knock on wood. But I, I always think you better knock, knock, knock on hood every time to make sure that cat's not sleeping up there. But Again, you know, the benefits, the risks are small and easily manageable, and the health benefits are tremendous from sharing your life with a cat. Katie wants to, this is interesting because I found this, I didn't know this, it was that serious, but Katie is asking you about canned food versus kibble. And along those lines, in your book, you really warn people, don't give little treats that are meant for dogs for your cats. They eat it, but... Boy, it really can cause problems, so go ahead and respond. Well, you know, this was interesting. On this tour, I was at a feline-only practice in Houston, Texas, and there's a certification for veterinarians called ABVP, American Board of Veterinary Practitioners. Very difficult to get. Within that certification, there's only, I think there's 67 ABVP feline specialists in the United States. Four of those were in this one practice in Houston, Texas, so I'm there with them at the start of this tour, and I said, listen, I'm getting ready to go on a nationwide tour. What do you want me to tell the world about cats? What's the number one thing? And they said, tell us, tell the world that we've been feeding cats wrong for 40 years, four decades. And here's what they said, and this is, you know, we talk about this, you alluded to in the book a lot, is we've tended to feed cats dry food free choice where they could just graze whenever they were you know, whenever they were hungry, they'd go up and eat some food, and then eat some food, and eat some food. Well, there's a couple things that's happened there. One is cats are overweight or obese, 50% True. of them. And secondly, there's a tremendous increase in diabetes in cats. And we now know that we want to feed uh, canned food, not dry food. And we want to feed meals like we do dogs. So you, you put it down, and what they consume within 15 minutes, um, you know, they're not eating it, you put it back up. And you're better to feed little tiny meals throughout the day. Uh, you know, I work out of my home, and my wife uh, and I are home most of the time. And when we're home, we feed our cats three to four times a day, little tiny bits that we 
you know, we put uh, we feed both dry and canned, but we'll take the canned food and have uh, some inexpensive cat dishes, and we just put little tiny. It's like going to a real expensive restaurant where the chef gives you this little tiny taste yeah, of something, right? And we hide it around the house. We put put it up at the top of the stairs. We put one in, uh, under my son's bed upstairs. We put one at the uh, in the spa room. We just hide it in different places and let the cats go out and find it. And and then for dogs, you know, dogs and cats, I like food puzzles. Uh, one of them I like the best for cats is, I can't find it uh, in most pet stores, but it's by a company called Premier.com, and it's called Exerciser. It's E-G-G-C-I-S-E-R. Exercise. I think I'm spelling that right. It's like exercise, but it's it's A G G Exerciser right. by Premier dot com. Premier dot com. Okay. Yeah, it's it's dialable, so you can make it you know easier, harder for them to get the kibble out. But you know, recreate that. You, know, you just don't want to feed the body of dogs and cats. You want to feed their mind as well, and you do that by uh, recreating a non lethal hunt in the home. All right, we have uh, this is um, 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 who is this. Charlie, my dog keeps eating grass and plants and vomiting. Uh, there are no other signs of illness. She has been doing this for weeks. We well, see it. You see it in the, the springtime and early, uh, early summer because those little tender shoots of grass come out. And trust me, I have four dogs and four cats, and you swear to gosh, they're like cattle grazing in the, this time of year. The, the used to be the old thing was well. You know, they they chew it to make themselves throw up. So when they chew a bunch of grass, it sped things through the intestinal tract. So if they ate something that didn't agree with them, we now know that's not true. Uh, you know, dogs are omnivores, which means they eat plant plants and uh, uh, animal proteins. Cats, by the way, are what we call obligate carnivores. They have an obligation to eat meat, and so you can't feed plant-based foods to cats because they don't have the the you know the enzymes to convert plant-based proteins into these necessary amino acids and actually you can cause a cat to go blind if you feed them dog food they can't convert these amino acids to taurine wow. which they need for sight but um you know you you, you got to go back with these cats and and um uh you know feed them like again like the you know the the you know, feed them like the little tiny African wildcat that they are. But these dogs, though, they love the taste, the taste and the texture of those little blades of grass in there. And I have dogs at home, and, and they'll eat it and throw up. They'll eat it, and you'll see it past, and there still almost looks like a like a hairball in cats, you know, that hairy cigar that cats throw up, except it's grass that comes out the back end of the dog. But uh, it it really doesn't do. It's not a pike appetite, which is... You know, pets that have some mineral deficiency and they want to chew something. It's nothing related to what they want to throw up most of the time. It's just something they like it and they do. All right. We're going to take one more break and we're going to continue with Dr. Marty Becker. I'll be right back, okay? Sure. Hold on. Dr. Becker?
<clears throat> I like coffee. I'd go somewhere. Oh, hey, listen, I I understand that. I understand you that. Know, you know, one thing we might talk about here at the end is uh, about. Uh, uh, let's see here. Probably should talk a little bit about litter box solutions. Yes, because yeah. so many problems. Yeah, that's that's the number one reason people get rid of cats. So yes, all right, that'll be the uh, second thing I go to, and uh, don't hesitate to bring it up if I you know okay. should forget for some reason. By the way, when we are doing the uh, show live on Friday, it's going to be one of these things where it's going to be short. We only have a half hour, but uh, for the most part, a brand new audience. Maybe those some of those overlapped from my afternoon show. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I want to take some calls, but it's just going to move real quick. I think God, we got to keep our answers pretty short. Yeah, we got to, yeah. well, not necessarily too short because we got 10 minutes and then an eight minute segment, I think. And so we'll just play it by ear, but it's just going to be great to have you on because that'll be the first local, well, first show for the, that I've done in the, in this region since my afternoon show and the whole WZTK dissolved. Uh, I've been off the air in those markets, so this will be the first time on the, in that market, or close to that market anyway. And not my syndicated show, that's been on, but mm -hmm. but uh, so it's going to be significant. You're going to be my first guest on that. So. Oh, good. Cool. All right, stand by. A couple of weeks ago, visiting relatives, had a great time, and we were just talking about different things, and just out of curiosity, and, and I brought up the subject what is a mule and uh, can a dog and a fox mate and can they have offspring? And just interesting little questions about that. And Dr. Becker, who's with us, who has a brand new book, Your Cat, The Owner's Manual. Really great book. It's one of those books you're going to, you probably don't want to loan out. You might not get back, but it's a great book. You have a cat and there's a also a book for dogs, the same title. Your Dog, The Owner's Manual, which just came out in paperback. But Dr. Becker, if you don't mind, I'm just curious about certain things. Can can like a, a fox and a dog mate and, and can a wolf and, I mean, I know a wolf and a dog can, but talk about maybe a coyote and a dog. I mean, is this kind of stuff possible if even artificially? Yeah, you, you do see, uh, you do see uh, a fox can't with a dog, but a coyote can't. Uh, you see, uh, you see coyote, uh, part coyote dogs, part wolf dogs, uh, fairly frequently. Some people kind of do it like a, a badge of honor, like my dog's part wolf or my dog's part coyote. <clears throat> I can actually remember being a veterinarian. I graduated in 1980 from Washington State University College of Veterinary Medicine. I come out this little greenhorn, terrified, you know, of, of you know doing surgeries and all these things. And I probably wasn't into practice two or three months when somebody brought in a dog that was was uh, you know, it was a coyote, and but it had been proportionally tamed, and I'll never forget that dog came up and I went in to do something, and it and it, we had these kennels that had wire on the sides and a wire top, yeah, yeah. and this thing made a lunge for me, and I jumped up. It was almost like Spider Man. I jumped up in the air, and this dog was jumping up, snapping at my rear end like a cartoon. And uh, and all, I was yelling for help, and you can only imagine this being in a in a big kennel with your toes dug into the sides of this thing, holding onto the wire mesh on the top with this coyote jumping up, going to grab you in the rear end. <laughs> but uh, you know, some of them make some of them make really nice, uh, you know, nice pets. Some of them, yeah. But it's interesting; they 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 seem to be just not domesticated as much. Yeah, I, I don't. I really don't. We don't recommend those kind of crosses yeah. as veterinarians. When I say some make nice pets, it's not something that most people are equipped to handle. Now, when we talk about the reason people decide to get rid of their cat, the biggest problem is the litter box. It's a huge problem, and I know I've had issues with this too. So spend some time, and in the book, your cat, the owner's manual, you spend some really interesting time on this and some solutions. Talk about it. Well, you know, I've been surprised on this tour when I met all these people, how many people are putting up with cats not using the litter box. Uh, talked to somebody yesterday, you know, all of a sudden moved something and found out all that crystallized, you know, the smell about knocked them out. They didn't even know it was in the house, that the cat wasn't using the litter box or cats that pee in the box but don't poop in the box. And the first thing you got to remember is go back to these cats are desert dwellers and they like it's like what they used in the desert in evolution. So that means something has a sand-like consistency. So you start out by using, uh, for most cats, a, a clay clumping litter that is unscented. You don't want to use 
litter box liners. You don't want to use covered things. Covered cat boxes uh, might prevent the cat from, you know, spilling the the cat litter out the side when they're scratching and covering it up. But it's like being on a you know a summer at a festival and this one you know porta potty there that is that stinks and it sure. traps that smell inside. You want to get cat boxes that are extra large, and most cat boxes are too small. It's like going to the bathroom on a cruise ship. You're thinking either I've gotten bigger, this toilet's gotten smaller. It's uncomfortable. The cat needs to be able to stand up, turn around, you know, stretch out to its full length when it when it uh, goes to the bathroom. I actually like sometimes that at uh, container stores or at uh, the deep discount stores, you know, the big box stores, you can find these sweater boxes or other shallower, bigger things to actually use as a litter box. Most cats like it two to three inches deep. Uh, you want to have at least one more litter box and you have numbers of cats, and that's that's a big stumbling block for people. And, and the reason is they've actually done studies of cats with cameras so they could follow what happens during the day and there tends to be a cat that bullies the other cat. So it, it's guarding all the resources, it's guarding the litter box, it's guarding the food, it's guarding the water. And the other cat decides, i got to go to the bathroom. And it'd be like your, your kid in grade school thinking, if I go to the bathroom, there's these bullies that are going to beat me up. They've mm-hmm. told me they're going to beat me up. Mm-hmm. They told me they'll, they'll beat me up one of these days. Yeah. So pretty soon, you know what, I just, I just don't go to the litter box. I go behind the, the entertainment center. I go in this house plant over here. So, you know, a cat can't guard all the litter boxes, so you you know want to have some, uh, you know, choices for them. You want to scoop it out every every time they go to the bathroom if you if you're home. Uh we're home, so when our cats go to the bathroom, we just scoop it out. If you don't as often as you can, uh you know, normally we scoop litter out and then add some back. So we're taking the the feces and the clumps yeah. out, and we add a little bit back. Every week you want to just empty it completely out. Throw it all away, uh scrape the bottom, start over. Every two to three weeks, you want to do that, but you want to wash it out with mild soap and water, let it air dry, then fill it back up with litter. Uh, That's interesting because I've seen those uh, boxes that have like a strainer, and you pick up the strainer, throw away the waste, and reuse uh, what appears to be clean litter, but yeah. that isn't true, is it? Well, those are actually, you know, I actually kind of like those litter boxes. They're real easy to use, but you, you every every week, trust me, every week throw it out. Yeah. It, it, it has a scent that you might not be able to smell. It looks clean, but they can. And then every six months, just throw the whole thing out. Just really? Throw, just throw. That's why I like you to get cheap ones. Throw it out. I was at a at a place called Paws Chicago and a beautifully run shelter there. Every six months, they they throw all their litter boxes out and start over. Uh, which they're doing it exactly right. And, and remember, if they're not using a litter box, you can use that feel-away, which really, really is going to help cats use the litter box. Oh, it's just and, great. And one other tip for people. I, I, how many people out there have a clumping litter, and the thing sticks on the scoop, the litter scoop, and then you bang it on something, and then it ends up breaking. You hate that clumpy stuff on there. There's there's a really good litter scoop called Litter Lifter, L-I-T-T-E-R dash L-I-F-T-E-R. Uh, I tried to show somebody in Petco yesterday, and they were actually sold out. But it's 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 cheap. It's it's as cheap as the cheapest uh, uh, litter scoop out there. But it it has this special way it's formed with these little tight ridges, so it's shaped like a triangle on the fins, and it doesn't clog. But uh, that is far superior to ordinary uh, litter lifters that you can use litter. Thing. So Litter Lifter is the one you want to buy. I'm going to get as many of these on our website, ifitrocks.com, and uh, by the time you're hearing this show, we'll have those links up. Dr. Marty Becker, congratulations on the new book. First of all, it's called Your Cat, the Owner's Manual, and Your Dog, the Owner's Manual, just came out in paperback, and the website, vetstreet.com. Well, I'm going to miss you guys. Until next time, my friends. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Becker. Great having you on. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Oh, that's good. All right. Well, I gotta, I gotta get my tail and gear and go exercise and then head to media. You do it. Have a great time. Thank and you. I'll, I'll see t- you Friday. I'll talk to you Friday. Okay, buddy. Bye bye. Bye bye.